The call of God is on your life. He has created you with great purpose to bring his kingdom to this earth. The world has problems and our Father has real solutions. We serve a God who can bring healing to broken lives, who can restore relationships, who can bring freedom to our hearts. And he has chosen to do these things through us. So how does he use us? Is it all down to us, our ability and our gifts? God desires to use us exactly where we feel weakest because it was never about us. What we can do for God and others, it's about being broken before God and letting him use us so that he can be glorified, so that his power can be made perfect in weakness. So let's stop trying harder for God. Let's learn to abide in him, to rest and be secure in his love for us, to seek his presence when no one is around, to obey him without telling anyone. John 15 says this, Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Abiding looks like rest. It looks like solitude. Not being alone and isolated, but being alone with God, our Father. It's when we remove ourselves from the expectations placed on us by the world and where we enter a place of honesty and vulnerability before God, our Maker, and where He shows us how loved we are by Him. It's the place where striving ceases. It's where we learn that we no longer need to earn love, but that we are loved unconditionally. It's from that place of knowing how loved we are that we can enter back into our broken world. And from the compassion and love that we've received from our Father, we can show compassion to those around us. And it's because of His mercy and compassion that we do this. God doesn't just want us to do good things and be nice people. He wants us to be motivated by love. 1 Corinthians 13 says this, If I speak in the tongues of men or angels but do not have love, I'm only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast. It is not proud, it is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. When we seek God in the secret place, when we're obedient to God, even when no one knows or is watching, it's in those things that God is digging and laying our foundations. It's how we build a house on a rock, the rock that is God's love his nature and his character and his presence. It's in those times between just you and God, in those private victories that no one knows about, God is laying down foundations and he's building our character so that when the storms of life come, we stand firm because of how solid our foundations are. The deeper our foundations are, the higher God can build on them, the larger our influence will be, and the greater and more long lasting the fruit will be. We literally cannot do anything apart from him. We can sort of do good things, be nice people, but we are nothing apart from the love of Jesus. As humans, we will often enter the secret place with ulterior motives, wanting to gain something from God for ourselves. We may spend time alone with God because of what we can gain for ourselves, but in God's amazing grace and mercy, our motivations change when we spend time with him. He's just glad that we've come to him in the first place. And as we spend more time with him, he becomes our source of security. And from that place of abiding, we discover how rich and abundant our Father is, how vast his love is for us, our inheritance, and how everything that he has is actually ours. He says to us, everything I have is yours. 
do we actually know that? Once we do know that we can, once we do know this, we can love and serve others without feeling depleted or without feeling a lack because our source is infinite. Our source is the love of the Father. So what does this look like practically? I think it looks like inviting the Holy Spirit to help us love God in obscurity and secretness, to live a life that is hidden with Christ in God, as Colossians 3.3 says. Let's challenge ourselves to be disciplined in obeying God even when no one was watching, in the mundane things of every day. It is in these things that God is training us for the greater things He has for us. So let's be disciplined in obeying God without telling anyone. Let's also hold back from exercising our gifts without a heart of love towards people. And also, no matter where we find ourselves with God, let us approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. This is what Hebrews 4.16 says. Let's always come before God, no matter how far we feel from Him, knowing that He has got us and that He loves it when we come back to Him. Another thing that I'd love to challenge you guys to do is read the, the book of Romans in one sitting. It should take you about an hour, and if you don't have an hour, I'd suggest you know, splitting it up into two. Um, the Bible was originally read, written to be read aloud. Invite God to speak to you through His Word. Romans is amazing. It talks about how we are justified by faith, not works. It's no longer about what we can do for Him, but what He's done for us through His death and resurrection and how love is the fulfillment of the law. I often read Romans when I need reminding of all these things. And I've never read this book without it stirring something in me again and without God speaking to me. So let's let the word of God renew our minds and transform our hearts. Thank you guys so much for listening. It has been a pleasure talking to you all. See you.